We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello, I'm Shelley Brunswick, Chief Operating Officer for Space Foundation. I'd like to share what space got to do with it and how we can move the human story forward to create more access and opportunity and make space for everyone. Space for you, space for all. That's what we believe. At Space Foundation, we believe that by advocating for innovation, we're bettering life here on Earth. When we think about the global space ecosystem, many times we think about going to the moon and on to Mars and beyond. And space certainly is those things. But it's also about how we close that loop and bring that technology that we've developed for space back here to Earth and how we're using space to better life here on Earth. At Space Foundation, we do have three divisions. We have our Symposium 365, your trusted source for information. We have our Center for Innovation and Education, which is your trusted source for educational programs. And we also have our Global Alliance, where you're, we're your trusted partner for activities both locally, nationally, and internationally. What I really want to focus on today, though, is the growing space ecosystem and that amazing technology. Despite the worldwide pandemic, the global space economy in 2020 grew to $447 billion. And financial analysts from Bank of America to CNBC predict the global space economy will grow to more than $1.4 trillion by 2030 and $3 trillion by 2040. But the most exciting part about all that growth is the global space economy is primarily commercial. It's products and services we use every day. Here's an example from our space report that again highlights in a pie chart that 80% of the global space economy is primarily commercial. You can see from the red and the blue where it says commercial infrastructure and support industries, commercial space products and services, that is that commercial entity that is benefiting us every day. And when we also think about the technology trends we're watching, they're all related to space as well. Absolutely, when you look at this chart, you can see things that relate to space directly, debris modern monitoring, satellite service and repair, communications. But there's also healthcare breakthroughs, energy and energy storage, textiles and manufacturing, robotics, automation, and more that are part of the space ecosystem. If you wanna learn more about some of those products that are waiting to be commercialized, you could actually go to the NASA Tech Transfer Office or the European Space Agency Tech Transfer Office where there are thousands of patents that are waiting to be commercialized by people just like you. And you'll find patents in all those areas that relate to healthcare, uh, bettering our lives, energy, communication, agriculture, and more. And what are some of those benefits? Well, one that I'm a big fan of is the selfie technology on your phone. Many of our phones are using NASA imaging technology to capture that perfect picture. They also have encryption, battery strength, recharging capability, and something we all can't live without, connectivity. We all wanna be connected to the internet, each other, and the information on our apps. You can also think of that in fire retardant clothing. You know, my husband was a firefighter for 30 years. He ran into burning buildings to save people's lives. And I'm grateful for that fire retardant clothing. But there's also formulated foods and many others that we're using every day that we don't even think about. And when we think back 60 years to the start of the space industry or the space ecosystem, there were really only two countries operating in space and their focus was putting a man on the moon and doing it first. Now, there are multiple countries focused on putting the first woman and person of color on the moon. And private companies are building the rockets to get us there. 
And at one time, 60 years ago, if you wanted to be in the space industry, you primarily worked for the government and you were a STEM professional. Now, we still need STEM professionals, but we also need non-STEM, trade workers, artists, entrepreneurs, program managers, policy makers, space lawyers, and more. And at one time, when you got a degree, that was it. You were done with learning. Now we have to become lifelong learners because technology is continuing to change the way we do our jobs. A great example is during COVID and the pandemic. I had never used Zoom before the pandemic. I had always preferred face-to-face, -face, just like we hope to do in the future the next time I see you at the um, idea exchange meetings. But I did do that first Zoom meeting two months into COVID. I was using my dining room as my studio. I was getting ready to do a presentation to 2,000 people from 150 countries. My boss was listening. And I was talking to my husband when I received a message. Mute yourself. <laughs> so I have learned how to use Zoom over the last two years and master the mute button. But we're all going to continue to incorporate new technology into the way we do our jobs and live our lives, whether it's as simple as Zoom or it's how the car mechanic fixes our car. You know, 50 years ago, you took your car to the mechanic and they tinkered around until they figured it out. Now you take your car to the mechanic, they plug it into a computer and your car tells the computer, here's what's wrong with me, fix this. The mechanic's job didn't go away, it just changed and incorporated new technology. So we will all have to become lifelong learners. And space is also improving the quality of our lives for women and minorities in all regions of the world. We do face some challenges in the space industry though, especially here in North America, Europe, Japan, we do have a workforce shortage. We have more job openings in the space industry than there are workers. We're also seeing a retiring of our baby boomers. And we're looking for where are those replacement workers to take those amazing jobs working at NASA, government, other government agencies, academia, or all the amazing startups that are out there. We do have a skills deficit too, because although somebody might wanna be in the space industry, they may need to reskill and upskill to come into the industry. And that can mean the workforce of today. So there could be a project manager that's in the oil and gas industry that has always wanted to be in the space industry. So they're ready to come into the space industry. We need program managers in the space industry, but they might need to learn some of the lingo and the differences between the oil and gas industry and the space industry. So there is an opportunity to transition out of different career sectors, bringing with what you've learned in marketing, finance, program management, et cetera. But you're still gonna need to do a little reskilling into the space industry. And we also have that innovation gap. Thousands of patents are waiting to be commercialized to benefit our lives. We can commercialize that space technology to benefit not only our lives, but to create new jobs and new economic development. So today, this is where I'm gonna wrap up this little soundbite on Idea XME. I hope you'll join me for the next one on how you can join the space industry with a five-step workforce development roadmap. This has been Shelley Brunswick with Space Foundation. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.